All right, what is going on, uh, Laker fans? Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. So usually it's post game show number two, post game show after the post game show. This is technically post game show number three because recorded something a little bit earlier and uh, it sounded awful. So I did not want to put it up on YouTube. So I wanted to improve the quality, come back to it. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, oh, what an interesting night, Laker fans. What an interesting night, Laker fans. Uh, we got a lot to get into. Another awful loss. Another awful loss for the Lakers. No really other way to describe it. Um, I want to talk about how the Lakers just basically refused to make adjustments. Uh, the entire fourth quarter, basically, I don't know what the Lakers did to change anything of what they were doing. Um, add this to another list of bad losses for the Lakers this season. Two and three on the road trip. I'll go through a couple scores in the NBA. We'll talk standings in the NBA. And then, of course, we'll talk the latest on Kyrie Irving. Um, 131 to 126, the final score. Lakers lose to the Pelicans. Thank you for uh, being a part of the show. Please subscribe to the channel, by the way. I know I'm uh, mentioning it more frequently now, trying to get to 21,000 subscribers, getting a little bit closer. So appreciate you guys being a part of the show. If you could please subscribe. Um, very, very frustrating loss, Laker fans. It was. Like, I have, I have no other way to describe it. I mean, incredibly frustrating watching the Lakers play basketball right now. Um, do you know the Lakers gave up 131 points to a Pelicans team that does not have Zion Williamson? Do you know the Lakers gave up 131 points and lost to a team that has lost 10 games in a row. It amazes me how the Lakers are so creative on a night-in, night-out basis and find ways to lose and incredibly frustrating. Tonight was frustrating. You know, they had an 11-point lead at halftime. Um, looked like they were pretty much in control the entire game. And then about 15 seconds left in the third quarter, Lakers up eight. And... C.J. McCollum gets to the basket, hits a two. Basically, absolutely no defense. And then Wendy Gabriel tries inbounding the ball. It gets deflected. Ends up in Jose Alvarado's hand. And he hits a three. And then before you know it, you blink and you're like, what the heck is going on here? We're going into the fourth quarter. And the Lakers are only up three. They were just up eight. They were up 11 at halftime. Um, and the Pelicans ended up putting up 42 points. In that third quarter, 42 points in the third quarter for the Pelicans. And then the Lakers only able to score 20 in the fourth. They get outscored by 16 points in the second half. They give up 70 in the second half to the Pelicans without Zion Williamson. I, I really don't have another way to describe this loss other than awful. It's a really, really bad loss. I tweeted this out after the game that playoff teams don't lose games like this. I believe that. I really do. And I think this is just a perfect example of the Lakers this season. They take a step forward. And then how many steps do they take back? Or how many steps do they go backwards? Right? One step forward, two steps back. Two steps forward, three steps back. That's kind of been the Lakers all season long. And you could just add this to a laundry list of bad losses that the Lakers have, have had this um, have had this year. Let me I, – I could just name some of them off the top of my head. Against Portland, third game of the season, you're up seven. Two minutes left to go, you lose that game. Against the Pacers at home at Crypto, you're up 17, you lose that game. A uh, couple games against the Boston Celtics, I, I think they could have won. A couple games against the Philadelphia Phillies, or Philadelphia Phillies, Philadelphia 76ers, at worst, you split those games. Um, the Dallas Mavericks game, I, the, this this game against the Pelicans, I could go up and down the list of of games that the Lakers have lost where we can all sit there and say, yep, that's a bad loss, and that's probably going to hurt the Lakers at some point. So, um, again, I'll kind of go back to this. This is just a laundry list of games for the Lakers where they're up and down, they're back and forth, there's no consistency. They win one, they lose one. They win two, they lose two. And um, this one is no different than I think the, the way the season has pretty much gone all year. Um, okay, let, let me now actually talk about the basketball side of things. 
and the areas that I thought were frustrating watching tonight. I know Brandon Ingram was cooking, basically cooking from the second quarter on. McCollum had most of their points in the first quarter. I know he's cooking. What I don't understand is, why not try something different? Can we adjust a little bit here? Adjust a little bit in the fourth quarter? Can we try some different things? Can we give some different looks? Can we send a double team his way? When guys are cooking the way they are, and I'm not saying that, you know, the Lakers didn't have a hand up or weren't contesting shots. Troy Brown at some shots I thought he was contesting. It was just better offense and uh, much worse defense. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of use this as an example, whether it's Braun with a hand in his face, whatever the case. B.I. was doing whatever he wanted. Can we try? Okay, you know what? This isn't working. We're going to try uh, we're going to throw a double team at him. Let's see how he reacts to it when he has to make a decision and make a pass. Okay, next possession. Um, we're going to try a different defender on him. Laker fans, I I'm going to point this out. Why do we have Rui Hachimura if um, that six foot eight wing defender slash um, it just a, a, it seems like a perfect need for the Lakers? Why do we have him? Why do we trade for him if we're not using him in a game like this against Brandon Ingram? Isn't this the perfect opportunity to use him? I thought there were times when Larry Nance Jr. Um, basically came in for Valanchunas. I thought there were times where put Rui on uh, B.I. or you want to try A.D. on B.I., put A.D. on B.I. and let Rui go match up with Larry Nance. It's not like Larry Nance going to hurt you on the offensive end. But just just doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a re different result, I didn't understand that from Darvin Ham tonight. And that portion to me was was no question about it. It was frustrating. And I, I just want to see, I, maybe I'm just being selfish on this one, but we got Rui for a reason. Can we play him in the fourth quarter? Can we play him more than 19 minutes? And the answer was no, the Lakers couldn't do it. Lakers didn't need offense, they needed defense. And you wanted to give the Pelicans some different looks rather than, hey, uh, they're not going to make any adjustments, so let's just keep doing what we've been doing and see if the Lakers adjust. And the answer is Lakers would not adjust. Um, all right, so where does this put the Lakers now? Well, they went two and three on the road trip, and you guys heard me barking for I don't know how long about um, how the Lakers, they could still find a way to go three and two on the road trip after they lost the first two games. There were games that were very winnable. Well, it ain't happening. And to be honest with you, I think two and three is right for the Lakers. And um, they're just a team that's, you know, below 500. And it, for every five games they play, they lose three. And there are two games, you know, they're a game below 500 on this five game trip. If you probably go the next five games, they'll probably be two and three again. That's kind of the Los Angeles Lakers. That's really who they are and what they've been so far this season. Um, so, and, and if I if I give just a quick little um, summary of the road trip, I'll do it in one minute here. The Boston game, yes, they should have won. I agree. Refs, really bad, poor decisions. But why is Patrick Beverly fouling Jalen Brown when you're up three uh, inside the paint? And, okay. Why is Al Horford again a wide open look for three? I know he missed it, but why isn't Darvin Ham fouling and sending these guys to the free throw line? Lakers also had chances in that Boston Celtics game to not put themselves in that position. Again, it was a foul. They should have called a foul. But the Celtics game, over time, the Lakers just pretty much said, we give up. We're not even going to try in this one. So you lost to Boston in that one. Brooklyn, you didn't play LeBron in AD. That was another L. The Knicks they beat, but how that game get into overtime, I don't understand. And if it wasn't for the Knicks giving it the giving the ball to Julius Randle rather than Jalen Brunson, Lakers probably they could have easily lost that one. The Pacers game, Lakers only led the biggest lead the Lakers had all game was two, and it came right at the end. They could have easily lost that one. So to be two and three, to be honest with you, they could have been one and four. They could have went zero oh and five on this trip. That's how unpredictable this Lakers team is. So um, that's where they are right now. Scores around the NBA did not go in favor of the Lakers tonight. Of course not. Suns won. Clippers won. Um, Thunder won. Warriors won. Only team that lost was the Portland Trailblazers. So uh, it, it's imperative that the Lakers are not depending on other teams to lose. And this is a perfect example tonight. 
three or four out of the teams in the West that you would have liked to see them lose all won. So where does that put the Lakers now in the standings? They're 13th. They have two more losses than the Thunder, the Blazers, the Pelicans, the Jazz, and the Minnesota Timberwolves. They have three more losses than the Warriors, the Mavs, the Suns, and the Clippers. I mean, it's ridiculous that they're still in the mix here, to be honest with you. But um, they're not helping themselves out by continuing to get losses and continuing to get L's. And one step forward, like I said, two steps back. So that's where the Lakers are sitting right now in the standings. So, Laker fans, I'm going to throw this out your way. Um, what's most frustrating right now with Lakers basketball? What are you watching or listening to and saying to yourself, what the heck is this team doing? Is it Darvin Ham? Is it the players? I mean, talk to me. Is it the roster construction? What, what was most frustrating tonight for you? I kind of listed my frustrations to giving up the 70 in the second half, 42 in the third. The way they closed out that third quarter, just ridiculous. Made no sense to me. The mistakes. Um, I, I think use, not using Rui is a mistake, and I think Coach Darvin Ham's got to be better in, you know, I've been complaining about late game situations, but this was not late game. This was the entire fourth quarter. I just didn't feel like the Lakers made any adjustments. So um, that's my some of my frustration. Feel free to share, you know, certainly your frustration as well, but this is not where I, I think anybody thought the Lakers would be at this point. Certainly when Anthony Davis came back, he thought they'd start, doing some work, but they're basically playing 500 basketball since he's been back. So what do you have the Spurs game and then the two losses, the two wins. And now this, yeah. So you're basically three and three since Anthony Davis has come back. That ain't going to cut it. It's just not. And you know, if the Lakers are going to make any type of move every day, another game is basically off the calendar. It gives you one less chance to, uh, to, uh, to, to make up some ground. Okay. So, the other big news, um, while the game was going on, Woj was tweeting. And in my head, I'm like, hey, Woj, trying to watch the Laker game here, buddy. You want to wait a second? You want to give us till the end of the game? Uh, no, Woj doing a fantastic job like he always does. I'm going to read off a couple of tweets here of what he said in regards to Brooklyn Nets. And uh, we'll kind of shape this up here and try to try to put it in perspective for the Lakers. Uh, Woj, the Nets are proceeding in talks as though they're determined to find a deal for Kyrie Irving ahead of Thursday's trade deadline, sources said. So reading that right there, this does not sound like one of those situations where the Brooklyn Nets are trying to either talk Kyrie into staying or um, trying to play out the rest of the season with Kyrie and saying, all right, well, you don't like it here too bad. You're under contract. And then saying that, you know, come off season, maybe we'll try to do a sign and trade so they can get some value for him. No, it, it looks like they're probably determined to turn this chapter on Kyrie Irving and move the hell on and who blames them. Um, Kyrie has not really made life in Brooklyn very easy for, uh, for the Nets. Okay. So now let me look at the other side of this. So Woj also put out, he had an article come out. I'm going to read some of it. I'm going to react to it. The Clippers have joined the pursuit of Brooklyn Nets star Kyrie Irving, sources tell ESPN. So that makes it the Lakers, the Mavs, the Phoenix Suns, um, and now the Los Angeles Clippers that are all interested um, uh, trying to find a way to see if they can get uh, Kyrie Irving. Okay, read off a couple more things. LeBron James is an immense proponent of making a deal for his former Cavaliers team, and the Lakers are operated as a motivated suitor for Kyrie Irving. All right, so let me put it this way. We know what's coming up. Trade deadline's Thursday at noon. I think these are the we – can, we can all, I think, agree that this is what we know a part of the situation. Kyrie wants out of Brooklyn. Brooklyn wants to get rid of Kyrie. Um, the Lakers are really, really interested in Kyrie Irving and LeBron James would love to play with Kyrie along with AD and, uh, and LeBron or AD and himself. So I think all of that is what we know. The other part, it sounds like that we know, I'm going to read this from uh, Woj's article after a brief back and forth on a possible contract extension last week, Irving ended talks and informed the team that he wanted to be traded. So Irving, uh, Kyrie's in the final year of his deal. Sounds like he was trying to get that 
four-year, $198 million extension. And uh, it sounds like the Brooklyn Nets were like, oh, uh, yeah, cool. We're down to do that. But we just want to put 39 different stipulations on here just to protect our ass because we have no idea uh, if you want to, you know, what your thought process is going to be tomorrow. <laughs> By the way, sounds incredibly fair to me if I'm the Brooklyn Nets. So with that in mind, um, now back to the Lakers and how this ties into it. Lakers have a legitimate, legitimate chance of getting Kyrie Irving. Here's the problem. It takes two to tango. So the question is going to be, are the Brooklyn Nets able to, sounds like they want to continue to compete this year. They got KD there, so I'm sure they don't want to piss him off. So from what I understand is that the Brooklyn Nets, if they did a deal with the Lakers, they're going to try to get a third team involved and then try to get some real players back so that they can use this year. They're not going to team up Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. That's not going to happen again. It's not going to be OKC 2.0. So um, will the Lakers be able to get it done? I'm not 100% sure, but I could tell you this. It, it sounds like Kyrie also wants to be in the Lakers, and it sounds like Kyrie also wants to play with LeBron James. So I think there's probably some mutual interest there. Now, what I would prefer in a perfect world that four-year, $200 million contract that Kyrie's looking for, um, I, I actually kind of think it would be pretty insane if the Lakers gave him four years, $200 million, just because you genuinely, genuinely don't know this guy, what his game plan is going to be tomorrow. Um, if he's going to sit, if he's going to play, if he's going to uh, whatever. You know, you just don't know. Look at Kyrie over the last couple of years. He's not your typical NBA basketball player. In a perfect world, I think the Lakers can trade for Kyrie, do whatever they can to get Brooklyn, you know, what they're looking for, whether with, that's with a, th a third team, not draft compensation, however you can do it. Um, what in an ideal world, you can get him for the remainder of this year and then figure out in the offseason what you're going to do from there. Uh, I don't want to see a four year deal. It'd be fantastic if he's here for the duration of LeBron, right? This season. Uh, maybe next year, and I think there's one more year after that. Something within the window of of LeBron and Anthony Davis, and then you know you could figure it out from there. But I'm not trying to give Kyrie no four year deal to be with the Los Angeles Lakers. I got no idea what this guy's going to be doing in a week. You want me to predict what he's going to be doing in four years? Um, he's a headache. He's all that stuff. He also gives the Lakers the best chance to win championship number 18. Bottom line, point blank, simply put. That's the, you know, that's the reality of it as well. So um, there's multiple, multiple ways to look at this kind of situation. Um, and, and who knows if he's with the Phoenix Suns. Okay. Maybe that changes everything for them. If he gets on the Clippers and it's, you know, Ty Lu, who he's uh, coached with or who's coached him before and won an NBA championship and Kawhi and PG are there, uh, PG are there. That seems like an odd, you know, pairing there or threesome there or whatever the case is putting all these guys together i think is much more natural doing lebron anthony davis and Kyrie. but like i said in the beginning takes two to tango this is not up to the los angeles lakers it is also up to you know obviously the brooklyn nets and and what they what they can get back in return and what they will want so um we'll just have to you know obviously kind of have to wait and see how things uh eventually shake out but it's fascinating it really is. It's fascinating. Um, everybody's got thoughts. Everybody's got comments on it. The Lakers are dancing around the question as far as, you know, the post-game interviews or the pre-game interviews. Um, but, of course, it's on everybody's mind. And that's what happens around this time of the year. And any, anytime you got a player of that caliber rumored to come to the Lakers, there's going to be a lot of chatter about it and a lot of conversation about it. I want to see it happen. Personally, I think it's worth the risk. But um, – you know, this Lakers team, for those who were saying, well, if Kyrie was there tonight, he'd have, Lakers would have won this game. I mean, you really need Kyrie to beat the Pelicans, who have lost 10 games in a row and scored 70 in the second half. No, what you need is some stops on defense. And if you get the stops on defense, then, you know, you don't have to worry about Kyrie. Um, but tonight overall, for me, it was frustrating watching Lakers basketball. And maybe, maybe they got some help coming with Kyrie. But this team should be better than four games below 500. So 
Uh, we'll see if that pressure is on right now for the front office to make this deal happen. Uh, you know, we'll obviously have to wait and see how things shape up. But overall, um, it's going to be imperative that the Lakers get into some type of flow. And I got to be honest, I, I don't know if I have the confidence if anything's going to change right now. They're just so inconsistent. And other teams all play the Lakers incredibly tough. And um, you're just not sure if the Lakers are going to show up or if they're not. They're going to show up, but are they going to deliver, I guess, is the uh, the bigger question. All right, Laker fans, that's it. Time to go to bed. I appreciate you guys being a part of the show. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, I'd always greatly appreciate that. And uh, I'll be back. Let's see. Monday night, I got Lakers talk, so we'll do Lakers talk. And uh, when I'm done with that show, I'll throw it up on YouTube for everybody. And hopefully you guys uh, enjoy that there. So thank you for being a part of the show. Have a uh, great rest of your night, rest of your weekend. And Lakers, uh, thank you for ruining our Sunday. Thank you all very, very much. Appreciate you guys tuning in.